How important is the temperature in your room for growing mushrooms? Are they really that sensitive? And how important is relative humidity? How will that affect your grow? What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. So in today's video, I'm gonna be answering the questions that I just brought up earlier. And also the second part of the video is going to be a review of this product by Inkbird, a brand I'm sure many of you guys are already familiar with. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a little intro just in case you're not. Uh, but most of us in the growing world, whether it's plants or fungi, are fairly familiar with the brand. Inkbird is a company most associated in the cultivation and reptile worlds with high quality sensors and controllers. For example, those who use a grow tent or some automated setup most likely already use one of their products. But during the making of this video, I realized that cultivation is just one small part of their product lineup. They also make things like vacuum sealers, sous beads, and other products not intended necessarily for the cultivator. Although I could sure think of some good uses for the vacuum sealers and sous vides, if you know what I'm saying. So they actually sponsored this video. They sent me this product to test. And so I've been testing it for over the, around the last two and a half to three weeks, somewhere around there. And so I wanna give you guys a product review on this. Oh, <laughs> you see how sturdy it is? <laughs> so this is the IBS TH5 Wi-Fi model because it connects to Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna get into that later on in the video. But first I wanna answer the first part of the video, which is how important is temperature? You know, a lot of people say, oh, you gotta be between 72 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, right? And yes, that is ideal. That is ideal. But also keep in mind that they could grow as low as, I'm talking core lovers, by the way, which is what everybody's growing, right? Like GT, you know, B plus Anokis, you know, that kind of thing. You know, PEs, TATs, etc. Jedi Mind Trick, um, Portobello's. Like that's, that's what people are usually growing. So that's what I'm talking uh, in regards to because different species will have different parameters, but generally the parameters that we set for coral lovers or any species for that matter is very, very conservative, right? They'll, they can grow well outside of that range. For example, coral lovers, right? They can grow, you know, in nature, they grow in places that regularly get up to hundred degrees Fahrenheit plus, right? And they can grow as low as like, late 50s, I'd say around 58, 56, they, could st they still grow. They're just gonna grow slower. Um, now, having said that, um, so, you know, as I said, colder equals slower, right? Hotter equals faster to a certain degree, but afterwards it just becomes stressful. You know, there's like the point where it goes like slower as a matter of fact, because it's so uncomfortable as well. Uh, but the main issue is with higher temperature is that um, sort of latent contaminants in your substrate or your culture, etc., cetera, uh, will be more likely to bloom in those hotter temperatures. So oftentimes, you know, suddenly there's a huge temperature swing. Suddenly, let's say that you get like a heat wave, right? And then suddenly you'll find there's, now it's contaminating. Uh, so that's the main thing. It's not like a sure deal, obviously. Um, it depends on how clean your culture was and how strong your culture also is genetically as well, because you could have clean culture, but you know, some strains are just weaker than others right? So they're not as vigorous. So that also plays in, uh, plays a role there. So that's for temperature. Basically, guys, if you're comfortable in the room, the mushrooms will be comfortable in the room. If you're uncomfortable in the room, but you're still alive, right? Like it could sustain life, then the mushrooms will be fine, basically. Just think of it like that. It's as simple as that, okay? Now let's talk about relative humidity. So relative humidity is something that a lot of people get stuck up on. And um, well, it is important, but here's the thing though. A lot of people have this misunderstanding that, oh, it has to be like 90 plus percent. You know, it's gotta be super high, right? And they try to get it to that rate. But the thing is that high figure that people quote is only important on the substrate level. So like the first millimeter to two of the substrate, that's where the high relative humidity is going to be important, right? And it's gonna be different than it's really not relative humidity that we're talking about. We're talking about like directly, you know, just above the substrate humidity. Relative humidity, let's just call it, it's just like literally the relative humidity inside your tub or whatever you're growing, right? And so the relative humidity here, you don't want it to be all that high. Like, you know, like 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, around that figure, it's fine. Um, it, it most likely will not be 40%. If it is 40%, then th that's actually a little bit too much FAE going onto your tub. But you get the point, right? Like, even if it's like a lot lower than, you know, say 80% up here, it's still going to be a lot higher 
towards the bottom of the substrate. And that's what's going to be important because, um, you know, we, we want to initiate pinning, right? That's important. We want to have the best con conditions for our fungi to do their thing as best as they can. We want to help them out, right? And obviously moisture and humidity is very important because, you know, obviously they grow after rain, right? Heavy rain, they love the moisture, they love the humidity, but they also love fresh air exchange. They got to get that air exchange going on, right? So, um, so what initiates pinning? Evaporation. Evaporation of the moisture on the substrate. So it's got to have two things, right? Moisture and fresh air exchange. And they have to be in good balance with each other so that it doesn't either dry out or it doesn't get too wet, right? And if it's not evaporating, then it's not going to initiate pinning. You're not going to get many pins. They're not going to be very happy. So, you know, it's all about that perfect balance. So that's why if you have a high relative humidity here, then there's not going to be much evaporation going on, right? So that's basically it. Now, having said that, a lot of people have those little devices, you know, those hygrometer slash thermometer devices like this, but like, you know, the smaller black cheaper ones. Um, so those ones are fairly inaccurate oftentimes, and people put way too much emphasis on them. They are tools to help. They're good for just knowing just the general conditions of your room, right? But some people, for example, I've seen like <laughs> modify their monotubs so that they like have like a spot where they stick it on that's absolutely useless and they put so much emphasis and importance on that without using their own eyes remember guys these are the tools to help us grow right we're not going to let them grow because they they're too stupid to do it we are the growers so um you know trust your eyes trust your senses they will not lie okay don't trust the walls of your tub and stuff trust your senses and your eyes um so yeah that's basically my little intro there so um those tools are useful though, for just understanding the general conditions of your room. So you could always keep it in the back of your mind, just like this. This is a watch. Okay, I got a couple of things that I need to do today, right? I got some errands I need to run. I got some videos I need to edit, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's 1046 AM right now. So now I could sort of have a mental map, a mental picture of what I would like to do, how I should schedule my day, you know, just in the back of my mind, keep track of where I'm at. Am I spending too much time on this task? Will I have time for that task? All this stuff is happening mostly unconsciously, but it's important to know, right? So for example, with the RH meters and stuff, okay, is it too uh, moist in your environment? Okay, it seems like we've had a uh, hot spell recently, right? So I'm just going to keep that in mind. That may affect my grow this way, X or Y, that kind of thing. It's just good background info to have. So guys, I think that's enough talking about that. So now I want to move on to the second part of the review for the Inkbird product here. So this is, again, the Inkbird TH5, um, IBS TH5 Wi-Fi model. And well, okay, so let's get started, guys. So when they sent me this product in, I first looked at the screen and I was like, this has got to be e-ink. Like it's so legible, so clear. You could see it from all different angles, unlike regular crappy L... Uh, LCD screens, right? This is quality stuff. Uh, it reminded me of my Kindle. So those are the benefits basically of having an e-ink screen is that you could look at it from all sorts of different angles, very legible, and also super, super good on the battery. So yeah, real happy about this. And by the way, this battery power here, this actually came at around this level. I haven't charged it a single time, like since getting it. So, and it, it was never full. Okay. So I've just basically left it and it's fine. So it's also got a lithium ion battery so you could charge it up real quick. You don't have to buy any batteries. It should last, I, I don't know, it was some crazy figure like months and months at least, if not years, I can't remember, um, without a charge. So this stuff is real cool. Um, and, but the most important thing about this, right, is that this has quite a few benefits over those mini little hygrometer meters that I was talking about earlier. Um, the main thing is that this is Wi-Fi connected. So you download the Inkbird app, you add your product here, you connect this to the Wi-Fi. By the way, this only connects to 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, not five gigahertz Wi-Fi. So if you got five gig uh, Wi-Fi, then this won't work. Uh, at least it won't connect to the Wi-Fi. So um, the main thing for our hobby is that this is actually really, really good to track, um, to track the sort of fluctuations in your room. Uh, for various data points, you know, the most obvious being the humidity and the temperature. But so I'm going to show you guys that in detail. 
But the first thing that I want to tell you guys about is the most important thing is how accurate is it? So I actually did test um, how accurate this is. It's a simple test where you basically take a sealed container, it can be a plastic bag, or it could be a Tupperware, etc., and you put um, like a bottle cap of sea salt. So you fill it up with sea salt and then you bring, make like moisten it. And just basically to like, quote unquote, field capacity of the salt, right? You don't want it water overflowing anything just so that the salt is all nice and moistened. And then you put it inside the sealed container um, along with the device. And then you close it and then you leave it there for around 24 hours and then you check and the relative humidity should be, if everything is perfect, if it is 100% accurate, uh, it should be 75.5% uh, relative humidity. Now, of course, it's impossible. It's just like a ghetto test, but it does give you a general idea. So, you know, it's it's not like it's completely impermeable, the bag or anything. But as from my test, as you can see, it's quite close to the point. Um, so the temperature's accuracy that they list on the uh, manual is plus or minus 0 0.36 Fahrenheit or plus or minus 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. And the humidity accuracy is plus or minus 1.8% relative humidity. So that's pretty, pretty darn accurate. Definitely good for our purposes. So having that out of the way, um, now let's talk about, you know, because this is a smart device, it does have various features. One of which, which I talked about is that it can track your various data points, but also you got the time, right? You got the date, you got the day, you got your mini weather forecast. And if you click this once, it's real cool. If you click this once, you'll see tomorrow. So this is tomorrow's little forecast. So it's also cloudy tomorrow. Very happy weather here in, uh, in the West Coast of North America. And over here, you could see the safe level. So this is like an influenza risk assessment. I will go more into more detail uh, later on. Um, and also over here, you could see that it's got three bars. So each bar, so this means that it's, so this is dry. This basically means that it's dry and thus uncomfortable. This means it's wet and thus it's uncomfortable. Right in the middle is a sweet spot. This is just right, right? Nice and comfortable. And sometimes there's no bar and that means that it's neither too dry nor too wet. So you're kind of like in a purgatory zone. Um, so right now it's a little bit too wet is what it's saying. So guys, um, let's talk about the app and the functionality of this because that's where this device really shines in my opinion. So now I'm gonna show you guys some random footage from the app showcasing its various features. In addition to measuring the humidity and temperature, it can also track the dew point and VPD, AKA vapor pressure deficit. I'll explain it a little bit later what that is, uh, for up to a year, which can help you better understand the conditions in your room and adjust your grow setups and techniques if necessary. And for those who don't know what vapor pressure deficit is, it's basically a way to see how good the environment is for evaporation by measuring the difference between the water vapor in the air and the air saturation point, which is the maximum amount of moisture the air can carry at its current temperature. Essentially, guys, it just shows you how humidity and temperature can directly impact your pinning as too much humidity without evaporation is not good for pinning and too much evaporation will dry out the substrate and in effect stall fruiting as well. So you want to have a higher VPD reading because it basically shows you that the conditions are more ideal for fruiting. Obviously, you don't want it to be too high, but a higher one is better than a lower one. And, you know, things like this, a simple RH meter will not tell you. So for that alone, it is definitely superior to just a simple hygrometer. You can also set an alarm for the temperature and humidity levels by customizing the high and low measurement figures for when the alarm would trigger. So knowledge is power and this basically gives you more data points about your growing room and it's quite accurate as well so now let's go back to what i was saying about the virus level okay so this device also has an influenza virus survival assessment which as the name suggests measures whether your environment is ideal for the influenza virus to survive or not and it calculates this by analyzing the temperature humidity and standard atmospheric uh, pressure to evaluate the absolute humidity of the room to determine the risk rating. And as you guys saw, you, you saw how the screen basically flashed, right? Well, basically this is because it's an e-ink display and that's how it refreshes the screen. So yeah, that's completely normal for the display. By the way, this is taking data point like readings every two seconds. 
So it's, you know, all constantly updating. So let's go back to the original point of the video, guys. Are hygrometer slash thermometer devices necessary? Absolutely not. You can go through the process without any device, right? I do most of the time, but you really start to feel like the negatives of not having such a device when you don't have it. So for example, I don't always check my watch, but I always keep a watch on. I always like to know where we're at in time. I like to do the same for my growing room. I like to have just that data point in the back of my mind. So I could always, you know, re refer back to it if necessary. For example, if my substrates seem to be drying out recently, then, I, then I, you know, I could sort of validate that by checking my, you know, thermometer slash hygrometer and checking, okay, so yeah, it is, it is getting a little bit colder and it is getting a little bit drier, etc. Um, and this takes it to the next level because you can actually check the whole trends on the app where you're at so maybe it is like lowering over the last couple of days it's been lowering so it sort of you know reinforces your uh, hypothesis as to why things are drying out maybe what the cause may be that kind of thing so you know again i i said it earlier but as the saying goes knowledge is power and it's good to have that knowledge and again not a replacement for your eyes but it is very very helpful uh just it, it's important information to keep in the back of your mind so yeah um, and of course, everything I said in the beginning of the video about temperature and humidity, you know, just don't think too much about it. Just be reasonable. Don't do anything extreme. Don't try to pump, uh, you know, for example, put in like a, a humidifier pipe, you know, coming in and be like, oh, I'm a genius. No, you're not. <laughs> okay. That's, 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 that's not, um, yeah, that's detrimental. So anyways, guys, that's the video for today. Thank you for all for watching. And remember guys, keep it simple. All right. Hope you guys have a great day or night. And thank you again, Inkbird, for this product and sponsoring this video. All right, guys, Michael File Sage, checking out for now. Bye-bye.